Hey guys, welcome back to Jason Unleashed. How's it going, Jason Cardi here. Good to see you. I feel like I haven't seen you guys in forever. <sighs> Happy Friday. Glad to be here with you guys. Thank you so much for watching. On today's show, I have Ana de la Reguera on the show. Finally, yes, international Latinx actress and superstar is here and so excited. Fresh off her new show, Ana on Pantalla and Comedy Central uh, Latin America. Yes, we're going to chat. Let's bring her in. Ana, 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 doom, 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 doom. Ana! <laughs> <laughs> we did it! We did it! Finally, we're both dressed in blue. Yeah, I mean, well, no, this is gray. I, this is gray, gray and very tight. I want to show off the muscles for you, Ana. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. You look amazing. Same. Hola, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm very excited to talk to you. Thank you for waiting because yesterday I was working and it took longer. For the first time, I went out of my house and worked like we used to do it. And it was very interesting. Well, well, I'm glad. One, um, thank you for being here. Two, I'm glad you're 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 healthy, working, and things are getting somewhat back to normal. And it's so good to see you. How has quarantine been for you? Well, I cannot complain. It's been good. I was actually launching Anna uh, right when when the coronavirus started. So I was working all the time. I was working from home. I was doing all the interviews, lives, um, <clears throat> everything. I was. I just started. You know, I learned to do uh, lighting, microphone. Same. <laughs> Same, right? So I had to adapt, but I really, I, I've learned, you know, many things about myself, about, I just, I started like a garden in my house. I started um, um, also a little like farm in my house. It's just been crazy because of the quarantine. So, you know, for me, it hasn't been bad, but I know, I know, um, you know, I have family who has been also um, affected by, by, by this. So, you know, every, it, it, it hits everyone in a different right. way. Yes. Absolutely. You said you learned things about yourself. What did you learn? Well, did you like, besides gardening, like what else? Because I think it's really interesting. And we've been talking about this a lot, how yeah. we've had all this time to do a nothing and to think and to sit and be like, okay, who am I? And what am I like into now? Like, who am I? Like, re it's like a rebirth. What did you find out about yourself? I just find out that I'm an old woman. <laughs> Stop. I'm an old woman. I was just like, yeah, I just started to be more homey and started cooking. I just started to do all the things I've never done and I was never interested in and I never thought I was going to be into it. So it, like gardening, cooking, um, I was reading more than I, I was, you know, I'm used to, uh, even though I do read, but I, re I read mostly things about my job, you know? Yeah. Um, but now I'm just reading different things, different topics. And uh, I just, I don't know, I miss my family more. I, 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 I'm, I'm talking to them more than I usually do. Um, so that's good too, you know? Um, just yeah, yeah, I love it, I love it. Congratulations on Anna, um, this show. You, we have seen you for years. We love you as Sister in Encarnacion on Nacho Libre, but you have played and have lent your talents to so many genres from legal dramas like Goliath to, yeah. to just everything you've done. But now you are driving the ship with Anna. You are writing, producing, and starring in this series that is autobiographical, but not autobiograph autobiographical. I can't even talk today, but <laughs> seven, year seven years in the making. Let's talk about the genesis of Anna because there's a really cool story behind it. Tell us. Yeah, well, I, I just started, um, you know, I, I moved here 14 years ago, and I thought, you know, after Nacho Libre that my career was going to, take off e um, easier and m quicker than mm -hmm. it took, right? So um, after like seven years ago, I thought I was gonna get a part that was gonna change my career. I thought that like, finally, all these years, you know, this is gonna make me an international star. And I was about to get this part. It was a comedy in a very big network with a huge director. And at the end, I didn't get it. So uh, that, that and also that I was going through like a, um, a late adolescency, you know? Yeah, sure. 
I was just doing things that I'd never learned because I was raised to be this perfect girl, this perfect woman. So I was always trying to be perfect. And I was always trying to be um, the, good, the good girl, the good um, daughter, the good sister. So all that combined and, 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 and things that I was going through and, 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 and my friends, all that, I just said, you know what? I'm not seeing this on, on, on Latin TV. I'm not yeah. seeing a story about a woman who you know, has to live in two different countries, that it's about to be 40 years old, that is the things are not being, that things are not happening the way she thought that they were going to happen. So all that, I just thought I want to write about this. And I, I didn't want also to be waiting for someone to give me a role. And, you know, I just wanted to create my own stuff. I wanted to yeah. dance, you know, the series has musicals. So I also wanted to dance and to do the things that I wanted to do in a role that no one was offering me. So I said, fuck it, I'm going to do it. I'm going to write it. But it took longer than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> and that's okay, though. That's okay. But it, what's interesting about Anna is how relatable it is, because I think you have all these yummy and delicious elements and intersectional storytelling. You have, like you said, song and dance. You have LGBTQ+. Plus. You, yeah. you, there, there's sex. Like, it's just, it's all these things. Were you apprehensive about how audiences would receive it? Because we, we, we've loved you in telenovelas. We've yeah. come to know you as, as you said, this woman who has been, I mean, you were named one of people in Espanol's 25 most powerful people, and you've been yeah. recognized by Vogue for your beauty. We've come to see you in this light. And here we have Ana that is kind of a departure for you comedy it's dark yeah. comedy it's touching on things that are relevant now were you afraid of how obvious audiences would receive it no i wasn't i wasn't at all i was just afraid of no that no one was gonna watch it i just wanted people to watch it i was never scared of what people would thought of me because people think a lot of things about us about public figures right so probably they think the wrong probably they have the wrong um um, perception of me anyway sure. so I was like you know this is who I am the character is pretty much who I am the the things that I care the things that I'm interested the things that I have um, you know my darkest thoughts or secrets or you know all that I just wanted to portray it in the show and I just wanted my character to be this um, conduct yeah. So it could, it, you know, it, I could, I could talk about all the things that I cared. So yes, I wanted to talk about um, bisexuality, um, me, you know, being with a girl. I wanted to uh, female ejaculation, like all the things that, <laughs> you know, very funny, and I just wanted to put them. And we're we're here for it though. We're here for it. It's it's incredible. I so I was watching episodes with subtitles. And it's and and what's cool about this show is that it resonates no matter no matter if you speak English or Spanish. Um, it's it's for everyone. So congratulations, that it's a great show. You, it's a family affair. Your mom, your your sister, and your dad are in it. But your mom, who is a journalist, who is who is who is famous in Veracruz, she is not in it though because working with her. I mean, you're an Aries. Is your mom a, an Aries as well? No, she's a Virgo. Oh yeah, a, makes sense. Yes. Yes, no, my mom is a huge, she has a big personality and she, and we're also very similar. Mm -hmm. And we're both, you know, um, we're, bo we're both very, we, we want to do things our way. Yeah. And she's a leader too. So two leaders in the same place, that wasn't going to work. Right. And, um, and also the, the, her part is so big that I needed a, a real actress, you know, I just needed, mm -hmm. I, I couldn't, I couldn't. I just didn't want to have any trouble on set or because <laughs> she, she used to produce her own show for right. the local, for the local uh, network, for the local TV. So she would have been t telling me what to do. So I was like, that's what the show is about. Breaking with the umbilical cord <laughs> and yeah. breaking with, you know, uh, with a little bit with your parents and, and with what with all the influence that they're in you so i right and, and and about okay this 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 thing that my my mom said to me works this doesn't work this is this is a uh, true for me this is not cool you know so all that i i just wanted to say it so that's why i didn't want her <laughs> uh, but you know i'm 
I'm glad that we're we're getting this show though, Anna, because I I mean now I think a friend told you or an, or a manager told you that you were never going to be Meryl Streep, right? And you had friend and a friend and a friend also told you that after forty you are invisible, which is not true. But in this industry that we work in, we're constantly yeah. being told that we we have we we're on limited time. Mm -hmm. that you're, you're, there's somebody else waiting in the wings that's younger, cuter, better, and you have to have been successful by a certain age. You are wildly successful. But now in your 40s, what, what are some of the insecurities that you, that you still wrestle with? Or are there any insecurities that you still wrestle with? Because you've been so successful. Thank you. Well, I, I, obviously, everyone has insecurities, but I think I have more in my 30s. Um, yeah then that's why I wrote Anna. Um, and I just feel like from insecurities is what makes us different and what set us apart from everyone else. So all my insecurities are also in the show. So now seeing all that out there that resonates with people, that connects with people, you know, it makes me feel more comfortable in my own skin. And mm -hmm. I'm sure I'm going to have more insecurities as I grow up. For sure, because every I think every decade, every time, and, and and that that's also what the show is about. That you have to get lost to find yourself. Yeah. And so constantly we are getting lost, and we are like in a good place, and then we are kind of like where I was. Yeah. Uh huh. We're up and down all the time. Mm -hmm. So I can't complain. I'm in, I'm in a good moment right now, but I still have insecurities about, you know what's my what's gonna be my next job like this was huge am i gonna be able to um i take it to me oh you cut out because uh thank you so am i gonna be able to capitalize what right. i just did you know not capitalize but just you do not don't lose momentum of and course so, you're just getting, we're all the time getting worried a little bit about yeah. what's next because this career is so uncertain. I don't know if but, that happens to you. Oh, of course. That, Anna, that's why this show is so, is so, it resonates with me because I get it. Like I said, you're so successful, but hearing you talk about your ups and downs, also in your 30s, being at a space where you're like, okay, I've had this international success. I've worked with so many great producers, been on so many great shows. But yet, why haven't I arrived in the way that I wanted to? You know, why haven't I had the opportunities that maybe my white counterparts have had? And why, like, why am I not being seen the way I see myself? So it, it completely yes. makes sense. But with that said, the conversations now, what are you, what are those conversations like for you being a Latinx actress with your, with your, your resume? Are, are more roles coming about? Are people more open to having having women of color step into those roles that you're seeing when you take on meetings with, with studios and productions and directors? Definitely, definitely has changed. I, 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 like, I, like I said, I arrived 14 years ago and almost I lost every single role because of my accent or mm -hmm. because I was too white to be in Latina, which right. is insane. Insane, and, yeah. And uh, so those were the two main um uh notes that we got back from the studio or the producers or the networks so right now they just is i would go to my dialogue coach every day try to get you know my my, my accent on point mm -hmm. and then i was like you know what if you want me this is me the only bad thing is that my english is getting worse <laughs> and I don't care about my accent anymore. I don't care about how I speak. This is me. Uh, but, uh, but, but yeah, n right now they always ask, like, they want my accent. They want um, someone who sounds real, you know? Yeah. And that's what they're looking for more and more. You know, there's still things changing, but... Right. Uh, but I'm happy that I didn't leave because there's certain point that you're like, at certain point you're like, I should go back to Mexico, you know? The, there's better chances there for me than right now yeah uh, that are here but um i just stood i just stayed here and it's great it's great because now casting directors and people know me i i haven't left i've been here so now it's um the jobs are better and they're and coming they're coming and also creating your own your own yes things, um makes you puts you in another conversation with 
with producers, directors, writers. And now are actually the writers who are giving me more jobs because now I'm one of them, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and when we get, it's, it's because you're, you're taking ownership. We're no longer, we're no longer, like you said earlier, waiting for someone to give you an opportunity. Like what we're doing now, Anna, is exactly me saying I'm tired of being told no. I want to talk to these people. We have a platform. Let's make it happen. So I'm glad that that, that is working out for you. And also, I mean, you're, you're busy. You have Army of the Dead, Zack Snyder, next year, Netflix, and you just wrapped on the next Purge movie, which, awesome. Yeah. You're busy, 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 busy. How how do you choose the roles that you want? Because now you now you can be picky and choosy. Like what? How does it, does it have to speak to you? Like what? When you're looking for a role, like what what are the what are the non negotiables? Well, to be honest, I I don't find out a lot about those roles because my agents don't even <laughs> send them to me, and I'm like, I was like, I I just find out that they were looking, and they're like, no, it's not good for your career. So they they take care of me too. On, on on choosing well, even though what they send me, because they, you know, agents know us that we just want right. to work, right? Right. And they know that if they send me something that is not that good, I would be like, I can go, like, I can see myself there because I'm very, like, I think positive and I just want to be on camera. I just want to be working. So, you know, I still have like a filter before my, enthousi my enthusiasm for <laughs> whatever they yeah. send me. Um, and then a lot of the thing is just like, I just want to work with people that I admire. And I was very lucky to have the opportunity to work, work with Zack Snyder. How am I going to say no to that? Or to the Persh Everardo Goat is an amazing Mexican director. And I was playing the lead on a, an American film. And I was like, you know that. I would never thought I was going to be the lead in a movie here. I was always thought, oh, I'm going to be the you know, the girlfriend or uh -huh. whatever, you know, um, a, a, secondary, a secondary role. So that's great. I just try not to go back or repeat what I've done before, yeah. you know. Um, so, you know, I play, I was on Power. So I, I was just going to... I was just gonna say, yo, you handle biz that's my show, Anna. That oh. yeah, so yes, power was great, Cappadocia was great, he's found him down. Like again, you have done so like your body of work is so eclectic because you've been able to not only show how talented you are as an actress, but also play roles and inflect culture into these roles that had they been given to somebody else wouldn't have had that same nuance so that speaks to the talent that you have and why you why millions love you you know and also the telenovelas come on that's like yes the, the, you, that that those are legendary and live on for forever i mean people still watch telenovelas from like 30 years ago because just oh, yeah. the fandom can't let them go and rightfully so that is great yeah. television yeah they love it they love it. I, I know that's why it's so easy. I feel bad when they tell me, like, like you know, people don't like that genre, that gen, that, you know, novelas, because yeah. they're great. And um, I'm, thanking, I'm thankful for that. I, even though when I did Nacho Libre, I, rem I remember they, everyone wanted to talk to me, the Latinos here living in the U.S., all the mm -hmm. radio stations, everyone because of that. And the studio was surprised because they were all wanted to talk to me. And I was like, yeah, well, I'm pretty famous. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm no, famous. <laughs> all around the world because of novelas, right? So yeah. I love them. I love them. You know, I just, I just, I, I, I'm just very, the thing I don't like about novelas is that it's a lot of work. It's triple the work. That's mm -hmm. what I don't do them anymore. It's like. 200 episodes for 10 months and you don't sleep and you have to be there from 6 a.m. to like, you know, 10 p.m. So you don't have a life. And obviously the quality of the acting, it's, it's, it gets compromised right. because how right. much you have to do. So, right. you know, if you can do less with better quality, obviously everyone, everyone wants that. But the audience for novelas and for those stories are amazing. Are I know. Amazing. I love how Anna's like, you, do you guys not know I'm famous? Like, <laughs> like check, check, Google me, bro. Google me. You, uh, well, again, uh, you, your body of work is incredible. What do you want people to take away from Anna when they watch it? How do, like, wh when you, when you were writing this, there's, there is, all the, more times than not, there's a goal of, for the story, right? What do you want audiences to take away when they, when they're done with the series 
and um, and and have and keep with them going forward after watching Anna. I just want them to dare to live life the fullest and to dare to make mistakes and not to be perfect and just to just yeah just just to do that because I was so afraid my most of my life and to to make a, a mad move or I, I was just so focused on to be this perfect girl that I wasn't having fun. So now that I don't care anymore, probably because I'm older and because now I'm not like, I, and most of the time that happens when you're younger, but mm -hmm. you know, like a, any age that you're in, it's just great not, just to dare to live your life the fullest. Even if you are gonna make a big mistake later, that's gonna help you for something or that's gonna, uh, that's just, that's the knowledge that you're gonna get right. after that. So yeah, I, I just want people to, just to be more free and have more fun, to be honest. I, we're, and that's and that in itself is a struggle, but Anna, because you've been able to be so authentic. I mean, you told ET that everything you went through writing Anna seven years ago, you're reaping the fruits of it now, and that and that's so and that's so cool. And I think that when you let go and you just say, when you let go and you allow, you attract so many cool things. I mean, yes. they're so they're they're celebrating you here in the comments. Oh, they love it. They're, they're like. They're like, Hermosa Salome, Viva, Viva Veracruz. That's a novela that I did like 15 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, let's take a question from, from them, and then, I have, and then I'm going to ask you about um, your charity work, OK? OK. Let's see here. Boom, questions. Wait, hold on. That's, is, can I do a question, Anna? Uh, wait, oh, here we go. OK. Uh, no, oh, there's no questions. It was just saying hi, Anna. Uh, <laughs> in 2010, you started uh, Veracruz Anna to help, to help support your community in your home, in your home state of Veracruz. And then um, fast forward to Los Angeles in Mexico, you, you teamed up with Carla Sosa, um, Olga Segura, Kate Del Castillo. Why is it so important for you to give back? Because you're also known for your philanthropy, which I think is awesome. Tell us about your initiatives. It was just something that it came in. Both charities, I didn't plan them. Actually, I, when people ask me about charities and because they want to have one, I'm, I always say, don't, don't do it. It's like <laughs> so much work and it's a nightmare because you have to be asking for money and, um, and it's very tough. It's where I, it's where I work the most, you know? And uh, so I, both of them were after uh, natural disasters. Yeah. Anna, uh, Veracruzana was after a hurricane that destroyed one of the, you know, a beautiful community called Antigua. And um, I just know as a celebrity, I was just like, I have to do something. I can just go back home and just sit down and don't think about it. I couldn't stop thinking about it. So that's how I raised the money. And I started doing residencies for artists. I did a museum there. I rebuilt this, you know, the city. So that's good to be, so, you know, to have followers on Instagram. And you have to use this for something. You right. Know? And the same with Los Angeles in Mexico. I, I was able to built a lot of homes. We were about to finish the project last month, but because coronavirus, I think it's gonna be done until September, where I think we pretty much built almost 20 homes wow. uh, with, the, with the money we raised. So yeah, it's, it's a lot of work, but it's just, you know, sometimes life calls you and you're like, okay, I have to do this, you know? And, uh, but it's, it's, a, it's a tough, it's, it, it's tough to have. It's a hard, yeah. If you, love something if you love a charity if whatever it is go and support it because all the people that works on charities do so much for yeah. very little and it, it is difficult it's it, it is really difficult but hey you you got that aries fire anna you can do anything man you could do anything what, what we, sign are you i'm a libra so if we got married we'd be perfect <laughs> yeah opposites right um before i let you go before I let you go, Anna, I just want to know, you know, out of all, you've accomplished so much and you've had this incredible life. What makes you happy? What, what, is, what is something that you, that, that when you think about it, just makes you happy? And who is Anna de la Reguera in 2020 as a woman? How, if someone asked you that, what would you say to them? That's hard, but I think it makes me happy to know that I'm healthy and that my whole family is healthy. I just feel that's why right now at this moment that makes me happy I, that i don't have those 
worries in my life, you know, with everything that we're happening right now, well, that is happening right now. And uh, just work makes me happy. Uh, dance makes me happy to be able to dance. Food makes me happy. Same. Uh, <laughs> Play story makes me happy. Plants make me happy. Uh, so, you know, right now, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a pretty happy human being. Um, and what was your other question? That if someone said, describe Ana de la Roguera and ah. in 2020, who are you as a woman? In 2020, who am I? Uh, I think I'm... I think, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, 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 I do, again, think I'm a happy woman. And uh, right now, I do think... 2020, even though about the pandemic and everyone's going to say the opposite, but it's probably one of my favorite years um, so far because I've, I've learned so much this year about myself. And yeah, yeah my, I think my 40s has, have been, since I, I turned 40, they have been my favorite years of my life. So I hope this gets better and better and better. I, don't, I hope it is, this is not the point of my life or they have no. my life <laughs> you are just getting started anna it has been so awesome to talk to you again congratulations on anna it's on pantaya and on comedy central latin america we could also stream it on amazon prime yeah correct correct you are so you know everything so i just, yes <laughs> well i'm a fan I'm so damn it prepared. i'm so sorry i'm so sorry that i couldn't i wasn't with you but i was I, I was shooting a surprise for actually for Army of the Dead for next year. So it took me longer than I thought. But thank you. I appreciate this interview so much, Jason. Absolutely. Thank you. A fan here for life. Where and you guys, I live, in, I live in L.A., yeah. Live in I live to meet you soon. We'll make it happen. As soon as we can, like, get out and about, like, safely, me and you will have some curacao. We'll kick it. Yes, yes. me and you. Anna, stay safe. All the thank best. You. Congratulations. And talk to you soon. Thank you, Jason. Ciao. Bye. Ciao.